I, I have a saying that I'll use sometimes, um, you know, and, and I don't just say it about health insurance, but I'd say like insurance sucks. I just try to make it suck a little bit less, you know, like that's, that's my goal. Like I, I understand that you don't want to pay $400 a month for your, for your health insurance at the age of, you know, 40 years old. Um, I get that. However, the reality is if we want to stay covered and, and avoid, you know, catastrophic Wisdom, medical bills. Wisdom, knowledge bombs we, dropped by B. Hannon. Do. He's yeah. making insurance suck less. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's you need to talk Brad about. Hannon makes insurance suck less. I love it. That's great. And listen, I don't want to steal your, your, your podcast or anything, but when it comes to that marketing, you know, what like content marketing, what would you recommend? Because I know there's people watching and I, cause I feel this way all the time. Cause I don't have a studio. Yeah. I don't have a, you know, a, a nice camera or what, you know, whatever. I, if, and I feel like kind of, you know, you can't do that until you've got all of the right pieces well, in place. Staff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to this episode of 8% Nation Podcast. Bradley Hannon, you are joining us with Cody. I hate to bring it up this early, but uh, you two are 0-2 on the pickleball court but, but against me. Gosh, he goes there is that, first is that thing. Like, you, hey. you had planned that since last night. You're like, oh, we're gonna I do wasn't going to bring it up until we're going to do the camera. podcast. Gonna and gonna the live first thing I'm going to say. It's okay. You're 0-2. That's all right. Yeah. We're, we're changing that tonight. So we weren't going to play pickleball tonight, but I think now we're right. playing pickleball tonight. Well, let's put 500 bucks sure. a point. I only no. burned. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's do it. You know what? We burned like, I burned like 1,600 calories playing last night. If you burned 1,600, I burned like 2,500 because I don't. I don't, I don't I don't get that active ever. You right? can't have more fun than pickleball. I'm like class. addicted. Yeah, that was it was it was a good time and and I, honestly to to be like full full disclosure, uh it was my first ever time playing pickleball. So if I did lose two games to excuses. Landon, it'll never happen again. So. <laughs> Here comes excuses. It helps that I'm 6 foot 9 and have like 9 D, you know, million more intimidating than anything yeah, else. There we but. go. That's well, true. Bradley, you are a amazing amazing insurance agent, super successful. We would love to just hear your story, unpack that story a little bit. Um, really we have a younger audience, typically newer agents typically. So, you know, really we want to make sure that we leverage your skill set to make sure that you've been through the ringer and we want to learn from your mistakes. We don't have to have our own scars. We want to learn from yours. So how'd you get started in all this, man? Tell us your story a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so the, the story getting started is actually kind of the most excite, like the, the, the one thing that I look back at that, that I'm, I love the most, right? Because, uh, it's kind of a family affair for me. So my wife, uh, actually was a recruiter and, and worked for an agency. She was kind of the office manager. Uh, and you know, she's, mentioned one day as I was probably as I was playing golf uh, yeah. because I was doing that a lot then and I still do it a lot now but uh, <laughs> she had said she had said you should sell insurance and I thought that's the worst idea ever like I, only people I know that sell insurance are like suit and tie used car salesman looking yeah. dudes that yep. Yep. you know smell like cigarettes and beer I don't yep. know um, yep. and and hey if that's you then that's okay but um, my 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 point was that I didn't look at insurance like a glamorous career. And I don't think that many people uh, no. grow up and we talk about all the time, grow up saying, I'm going to be an insurance agent. Right? right. So I went to an event, right? Events are big. So I went yeah. to an event. You know, there was a lot of young people. There was a lot of people that were making great money and, and very similar to me. And so I felt like if they're doing it, why can't I do it? And, and so uh, I, that's when I decided to jump in. I think it was, um, I think it was a Christmas party. So it was right after Christmas of like 2015, I believe. So going on five years uh, as an insurance agent. And wow. man, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change it, so. But from where you've started to where you are now in, in under five years, I mean, it's pretty impressive, right? I mean, you've been with a few companies, you've done different things, but dude, you've accomplished a lot. And we talked to you yesterday, you're making a good amount of money, you know, it's never enough, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a solid amount. Yeah, yeah. and I, and and. I have been doing it for a little while, but like there was almost a point, I mean, halfway through my career, I, I started at zero again. Wow. Um, and you know, the, the upside of that, and I, I tell people all the time, like it's going to be the best thing I've ever went through. Right. Because, and I believe that at the time, like it, it was, it was devastating for a little while, like restarting. Um, but you know, I looked at the positive side of this and thought, man, if I can do this again, yeah. So I'm not afraid to go back to zero and, and, and do it again. And, and I think that that helps me, uh, you know, moving forward. There's not, there's not a fear of failure, right? We kind of talked about it yesterday. I, I like to lean into failure a little bit. I think, uh, you know, I think that that taught me 
the most valuable lessons, man. And, and that's when it became more about helping other agents mm -hmm. uh, than it did, you know, just being a monster personal producer, right? Yeah. Which, you know, I wouldn't say I'm the top uh, producer, but, you know, certainly can produce at a high level and, and very passionate about helping other agents do that. Well, let me ask you this. So let's live there for just a, a quick second. So how long did it take you to get from where you started in the very beginning to then where you had to start over? And then how much time did it take you to do it a second time? Like, did you do twice as fast? I would say, I would say yes. I mean, it, it, it was about the same, honestly. But so like my first year in insurance ever made like 80 grand, you know, yeah. it was real close to the six figure mark. It was, it was exciting. I felt like a baller then. Oh, totally. You know, that was, sure. that was the best, you know, year of income I've ever had. And it also lifted a lot of the, uh, you know, it, it, it made me feel like, man, I can, I could do way more. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so my second year in insurance, I did way more. Um, you know, I quadrupled that income practically. And then again, back to zero. And then uh, first year as kind of a broker, uh, I, I did 110,000, so six figures. And, uh, you know, again, did the same thing, started almost, you know, tripled that my, uh, my second year. So, yeah. um, but, it, but it was different wow. this time around because it wasn't like, it wasn't flashy. It wasn't, you know, it, it, was, it was more about like, I mean, Cody's taught me a lot. It's more about all that money is, is a lot of that's going back into the business. And we're, and that's why I believe we're growing at a faster pace than we were before. I'm, I'm investing more money. You know, I'm getting around big time people. And, and honestly, it's the most fun I've ever had in the insurance industry. Sure. I thought about that's it last awesome. night, you know, just spending some time with you guys and, and being here for a couple of days, it, it kind of brought me back to like a, an exciting yeah. insurance career, yeah. right? It, it just reminded me like, man, this industry, I'm going to watch it change. You know, you watch like a small child grow up yeah. and it's like really cool to see. Yeah. Like I, I, I look forward to watching the insurance industry, you know, start to, to change with the younger audience and, yeah. and, uh, and insurance being more of a exciting career. Well, and I was thinking this morning, because I came in this morning at 6.30 to barbecue for everybody. Yes. And I was, but I was thinking how much fun I was having making barbecue for my team. But I was also, I had this thought like, if my ideal life, Cody talks about an ideal life a lot. Like he's like, if this isn't in my ideal life, then I'm gonna make a business change to make sure that my ideal life is exactly where I want it to be. Yep. Cause that's what I'm in control. Um, and I started to think my ideal life is actually includes my work and business mm. that I'm in currently now. Absolutely. Which is like pretty monumental. I'm not using work yeah. to get me to my ideal life. That's a big thing. Yeah. I didn't used to look at it like that. Right. I used to look at my work as funding my ideal life. Yes. Right? Do you guys feel that same way? Absolutely. And Absolutely. And I think I think that's when insurance that's makes good. insurance agents make a big change is when they start to like your ideal life incorporates your work life, right? I mean, it's it's a huge part of it. I, yeah. We talked about it and uh, without getting you in trouble or anything, you know, you mentioned that sometimes <laughs> on vacation the, the most fun time you have is like training a sales team or whatever, oh, right? Totally, so dude. it's it, it's what you're passionate about. It's nothing to be ashamed of, well, right? We're, we're going to meet up next week when he's in Florida and I'm like, "Hey man, we got this meeting in Florida." Uh, you should come break away. You're going to be on vacation. He's like, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I wanna, yeah. I'll, take, I'll take a vacation. I'll drive I'm in a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he told me he's going to come down and train the sales team too. So I don't know I'm if like, he's going to have two, a vacation. I'll drive two hours to train your sales <laughs> yeah. team. Whatever. I don't even I'll think he's going to have a vacation. He's just going to he's just going <laughs> to be good, working the whole time. But in Florida, so you know, it's going to be different. I'll play some golf. And we're going to play some golf. So on that note, the whole I like I love that you brought that up, Landon, because if you think about it's it shows the level of passion someone has for their career. It shows that they want what they're doing to be a part of their entire life. And, and they know that they love it so much that it will be for the rest of their life. Yeah. That's, that's something special yeah. because how many people out there, the billions of people that absolutely hate what they do, right? We were talking about our video guys and how much they love doing this, right? It's, it's like, it is, they're freaking amazing at it. It's right in their personality. Like yeah. they're phenomenal. It feeds them yep. the energy. Yeah. They're working in their 10. Right. Yes, that's right. I that's love it, man. that's that's like you know we talk about the ideal life and and Cody actually brought that up with my sales team on a training and and I began to break down what an ideal life is and just like you break down a goal like you know yeah. year by year month by month week by week I started to break down my ideal life that way and so I had a couple of my agents break out like their ideal week what that looks like mm -hmm. what that incorporates and and so and I did the same and and it was a lot of selling insurance and helping other agents sell insurance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a big part of that ideal life. And, and like you said, it's not a bridge to, 
to, to get me to my ideal life, it's a part of it, so. For sure, well, I mean, seriously, like, I mean, this is not just saying this because you're here, but like having a client and a friend come in town, stay at your house, work all day, kill it. We all made sales yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of business was sold, <laughs> right? And then um, playing pickleball, working out this morning, grilling, we're gonna play Frisbee today. It's gonna be, it's just, this is fun, man. But but it also is, like we're making some money. Yeah, no, there's, you know a, there's, like, there's a lot of synergy yeah. uh, going on and, yeah. and, and I love it. And you said, I remember like my first ever conversation with you, it was it was really along the lines of like, hey man, we're gonna we're gonna do business together, but like we're we're gonna build a relationship. We're yeah. we're gonna be you know yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of synergy, and and it's played out a hundred percent exactly how we we kind of described it on that first ever call. I think I used to always like look at relationships and friendships as like I would like I would almost try to like make my friendships almost like support the business we were doing together, but now mm. it's completely opposite. Yeah. Like. I don't care if we ever do business, we're still gonna hang out and like right. e encourage each other. Totally. And maybe five years from now, there's something then going on, but it's not, the, the friendship and relationship isn't predicated on how much business we get from each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is, I think, important, because I think you can come off as in inauthentic and Absolutely. boring and just annoying. Oh yeah, and saying? then you could, lose, you could lose a friend and a client, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 So. I was telling Lauren last night, I'm like, man, for those that don't know Brad, I've got to hang out with Brad, though we'll get to it at 8%, but I'm like, dude, he, he's just a, He's a cool dude. He's fun to be around. He 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 brings you energy. He doesn't yeah. drain you. Yeah, yeah. Like he's like you staying at my house for a few days and and, and us spending twenty four seven together. <laughs> dude, it's been fun, man. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. been awesome. Like I haven't had any moment where I'm like, gosh, I want this dude to go. Home. <laughs> I, not at all. Well, good because I extended my stay. I, we forgot to tell you, I'm I'm leaving next week. <laughs> Perfect. Now, so you place Adding home. seven days to the trip. Yeah. I like it. But no, we uh, you, you know with. With that being said, the, the energy thing, I mean, it's it's the synergy. Like, I haven't slept great. I sleep well at my house, yeah. and when I'm not home, I don't sleep well. And Landon's like, dude, you're gonna you're gonna freaking pass out or something. I'm like, yeah. no, dude, I feel I feel great. Like, I feel awesome. the best, you know, the best I've felt. And you, last night, you're like, listen, man, if you don't want to work out in the morning, you're good. I'm like, yeah, right, dude. Like, you're not gonna work yeah. out, dude. No, yeah, let me know when you're back, bro. I knew yeah. just by saying yeah. that, that, that there was no chance you were missing. No chance, no chance. In fact, I think I was up before you this Dude, morning, so. You may have been, <laughs> it was 5.45. Yeah, I was, I was. I think I was in the shower at that point already, yeah. so. Dude, it was, th th this morning's workout was. That was something, and <laughs> the coolest part is, again, you made me do it again, because we, we worked out, and then we, we met with the sales team this morning, and you're like, all right, who's in charge of energy? And we put, uh, Tucker, is it? In, uh, I believe it was it was one of them, right? In charge of in charge of the energy, and so, so he said, and I said, I'm not. I'm, I got enough energy this morning. I'm not doing it. And and he said, 30 jumping jacks, and then Cody starts doing. It. I'm like, well, heck, well, now man, I now I gotta do it. So I did 30 more jumping jacks, and not that that was a lot, but like, you know, yeah. I we're we're driving each other, we're pushing each other, and and yeah. you you killed it this morning, by the way. Thanks. You know, I might have a few pounds on you. Uh, but like we lifted the same weight and, and like I told Landon, I think you did more reps than me even. So well, his dad always says never let anybody much. outwork him, right? And he takes <laughs> yeah. that to a team, man. So yeah, even yeah. even then. So let's talk a little bit about um, if you don't mind, you got a team. You know your team's going to be watching this building. Let's talk a little bit about culture, atmosphere, energy. What's the difference? What have you seen potentially lately that you want to implement in your own team? What are some challenges? How are you affecting the culture at your office? Or mm. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, man. So all of my, like my, I, I basically have kind of two different agencies, right? I have my virtual team. They are all across the country and, you know, I, I connect with them really twice a week, three times a week, you know, via webinars. But I also have the office space where, you know, we've got about 10 agents working out of the office. And, and as far as, I mean, it's really a virtual team. You can have great culture, but it's, it's never going to look quite the same as in, in the office space, in yeah, my opinion. I but agree. Um, but the office space is interesting because every single one of my agents has not been doing insurance for more than, you know, a couple of years. Yeah. Like, like the, I think the longest one might be two years. And so um, we're still in this kind of building phase where I, I believe that most of my agents don't even realize what's, what's down the road for them in a year I or agree. so after, you know, making multiple six figures and, and you know, just kind of breaking through some of those uh, limiting beliefs and such. So yeah. um, as far as culture, I think we have, you know, I think we have a, a really solid culture, but it's it's driven by uh, just a desire to build something special. You yeah. know, I tell my team mm -hmm. all the time, hey, 
we're, we're working to, to, to build something, but it's not just like to build a big business that pays us all a bunch of money or me a bunch of money. Like I want to build something special. Like I want to, I want to make a difference in, in agents lives and, and obviously in the lives of our clients too. So, um, you know, that's always been the focus is to build something special. And that does look very, very large. One so. of the things I've learned from you since I've spent some time is, um, you seem very passionate about the leader that's also trying to be a producer and how that's difficult. Um, why don't you unpack that a little bit? Cause we got tons of people that are trying to build a team, have a team, failing at building a team. What have you learned in that capacity? Yeah. So I think that, you know, like, like you mentioned, um, or like I said earlier, you know, as far as the production thing, I'm not, I'm not the number one personal producer in the entire world. And, and really, I don't know that I ever have been or ever will be, but I believe there's such thing as like a five tool agent, right? So you can, you can, you can, uh, recruit, you can train well, you can sell. I don't know what the other couple tools are, but it's just, you know, it's just the point. So like a five tool agent would be somebody that can, can produce still, uh, while managing a team or helping to manage a team. Cause I, I do believe that you lead from the front, right? And mm -hmm. so if I'm not out there making sales and, and, and kind of leading from yeah. the front, then I don't really know that there's a place for me in, in leadership over a team that's mm -hmm. supposed to do that. Um, maybe with a track record of like 10 years of, of consistent sales, maybe at that point, like I'm not selling, but I don't, I mean, it's hard to see myself like not making sales, yeah. you know, it's, probably one of the most fun things we do. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Um, so I think that for for those of you watching out there that are looking to go into leadership or to build a team or it's you've really got to keep in mind that you're going to have about half the time to produce for yourself and the other half the time you're going to be, you know, helping a team and so it's going to it's going to be a lot and it's usually a struggle to start out with, but you know, you it, you just got to you just got to put in the work, right? Like we talked about. So yeah. You talked about leading from the front. You've those that don't know you, you've really produced over a million dollars of health insurance premium every year you've been in the business. Yeah, right. Which is a lot. Um, also, I feel like you really get to know a leader and an individual when you get out and do like a sport with them, like pickleball. <laughs> This dude is so competitive. You get bro. to see how they lose really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to. He was, uh, dude, he was driving him nuts. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna remember that like, later, dude. He was talking every point. Like, like, okay, we're gonna go. Okay, let's here we go. Yeah, that, yeah. That won't happen again. My bad. I mean, he was just. He was it got pretty it. intense. I, when oh, we wow. had, we had just so everybody realized we had like you know wives and children around, and and so that was about the most reserved that I that I think I've ever <laughs> been. You know, like I was ready to rip my shirt off like halfway through, and just like and and if you've never played pickleball. I mean, like the object is almost to just smack that ball as hard as you possibly can. And so like there was some shots where I was like, oh, like I, like I wanted to be like in your face. But like I kind of. <laughs> no easy buttons. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, intensity is definitely something that uh, I have a lot of. And so um, I had to dial it back a little bit on the on the courts just while the wives and children were around. I mean, I really believe content marketing is really like the is marketing in 2020. I feel like people work with people that they like. And I think you got to have content out there to get to know people. I mean, we'll get on the phone, Cody and I both never talking to a person ever. And they they already are knowing us. They know I have three kids. They know yeah. that I like to barbecue. They know. I, and, and it, you know how easy it is to like have a real conversation when you've already sort of bypassed all of that. Well, it's just marketing really at the end of the day. And it's never been cheaper to be able to get your name out there. Just, you just got to build the right infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. And and listen, I don't want to steal your, your, your podcast or anything, but when it comes to that marketing, you know, what like content marketing, what would you recommend? Because I know there's people watching and I, cause I feel this way all the time. Cause I don't have a studio. Yeah. I don't have a, you know, a, a nice camera or what, you know, whatever I, if, and I feel like, kind of you know you can't do that until you've got all of the right pieces well, in place well staff yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah well a lot of people don't understand how much cody has spent to get to where he's at that's yeah. the first thing you got to realize some people are like it's not i mean cody is extremely intelligent and he's also invested in his brand like hundreds of thousands i mean depends on what you count in investing in your brand right you want to put eight percent in that that category you're talking seven figures of investing into your yeah. brand Okay, so that's the first step. Not that I'm saying you need to spend seven figures, but he has done a great job building a foundation. Built out a bunch of the first thing you got to do is you got to have a website where your content lives. That's your mm -hmm. hub. Then you got to do videos, and video content is the future. And you got to have that video live on your website. As an example, we just launched Secure Agent Marketing's YouTube channel. 
We have 160 subs. We're nine days in, but our views are getting up to 400 views uh, a video, mm. which how does a channel <laughs> right. that has 160 right. subs get 400 yeah. views? Well, it's because we have a website and we have Facebook groups and we have, so really in my opinion, it starts with a content schedule, living on a website and then using Facebook, Instagram, uh, Facebook groups, et cetera, to just push the content out and then you will get interest. On that note, I don't think, you, I don't, you may remember this, years ago when we like first met, I had you do some Google for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, what was one of the first things you said that you're like, dude, you got to fix this? Uh, yeah, your site was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, you could. It wasn't converting at all. No, and you were like taking like a website and embedding a form, and I'm like, dude, like you're never gonna get on any on, leads. on my on my lead like order pages. It was just an order form embedded in the site. Yeah. There was no information. It was just like buy. You know, yeah. it was like well, uh, and it wasn't converting. This was like four years ago. Well, yeah. three or four years when we first met. And then he took my advice. I'm not even sure if you hired me for the site, but then I was able to market the site. And then wouldn't you know, you started getting conversions and we started getting things. And now, now we get, you know, one week we had 1,250 inbound leads into, into Cody Askins. That's yeah, so, between, so marketing isn't just for people that don't sell or can't sell. I mean, sell. imagine, I mean, it's almost like it almost makes you lazy. It's yeah. almost people that yeah. want to sell more. Yeah, right. Yeah, marketing is for people that want to sell more. There you go. That's exactly, that's the punchline. Inbound marketing is is the future, but inbound marketing really isn't all that complex. It's creating a foundational structure with a website, with the conversion points, you know, adding value to the audience because people work with people to educate them. So educate them. I think educate that's the biggest me. thing. And, and, and I guess what I, where I was kind of trying to go to that is like, you know, the guy that has an iPhone and maybe like a little studio light and, and, and a little backdrop. I mean, there's nothing wrong with no, just no, no, filming no. yourself on Do a it. camera. If you're delivering value, then the production of itself, in and of itself, doesn't matter quite as much. Also, mm. you on your That's social- That's hard for me to, to grasp. One, yeah. one, one little tip is I don't really, me and Cody get way, 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 way more leads from our personal Instagrams and Facebook pages than a business. I was yeah. showing him that this morning. I'm okay. Like, I got like- like, well, that was one of your first pieces. Of, yeah, that was one of his per- first pieces of advice. I had like a personal Instagram and then I had like, you know, my business. He's like, I don't, I don't know why it all can't live in one account. And that's especially, when I, I switched back. And well, just, you and know, people, so people. Especially on Instagram. Yeah. People want, to, want to work with people that are, I mean, to me, that's probably the reason we're all working together. It's because we all kind of like, before we even met, like, I don't think Cody would let you stay in his house <laughs> if it wasn't for like us kind of knowing each other. But yeah. have you guys ever met in person? No, that was no. a bold move. You know, yeah. like we had never met in person. Uh, I, I missed the Tampa event that I was supposed to go yeah. to when he was doing yeah. that. And so, uh, you know, he opened up the, the house to me without ever meeting me. And so I'm sure there's like cameras all over the place and, yeah. and he's watching, watching me, but uh, yeah, that was a bold move, man. And, and you know, uh, like, I'm glad that we connected on oh, a level totally. to be able to do that. Well, dude, and, and, and dude, he, he, he brought us a, uh, a bottle of Camus wine as a, as Did a he? housewarming gift. I'm like, dude, you, now you can know come back up. tomorrow. Now you know what's up. Now you know what's up. <laughs> you know, yeah. Nate Offert opened the uh, staying in my house can of worms. That's what he did. Because he didn't even, he, dude, Nate, what's funny is Nate, Nate, he'll probably watch this. He's like, I'm coming and I'm staying with you. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> I, I still remember seeing him. I still remember seeing him creeping around your house at like 5 a.m. Like, we're going to see if Cody wakes up at 5. And I like, I thought about doing something like that. But I'm like, man, I, I don't know that I'm bold enough. <laughs> now that I'm enough. here, I don't think I don't I'm going to do that. I don't know that I'm bold that. enough to, to There's do that. There's nothing that dude's not bold <laughs> yeah. enough to do. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. He's, he's, he's crazy. He's awesome. Cool I talk to him all the time, but that dude's nuts. Yeah, he's cool. I like that guy. I love him a lot. I look forward to meeting him at 8%. Yeah, he's intense, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's so intense. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've been talking for a while. So what, where do you think you can add value? You know, one of the things that I like to always ask people is if you go back five years and talk to Bradley Hannon before we started, what would you tell him? I mean, man, I would, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is to kind of follow those people that are, are providing you that value, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you're in a hierarchy, if you're, you know, stuck and, you, and you're not getting help from your leader and, and you're, you're not, you're with a company that might not be providing you value, or you just don't feel like uh, like like you're learning and growing and, and being mentored and things like that, then you got to go. Um, you got to do something else because, you know, I, I think that that is the most important thing is, is having a mentor and yeah. having somebody that. And and so for me, you know, when you get to a certain point, it, you, I mean, you might have to reach outside of your organization. Yeah. So. Um, you know, that's having a coach, having a mentor, somebody to see those blind spots that you don't see yeah. is, is huge because just through our relationship and, and even being here, like I've just learned so much and you just got to be a sponge and even from your sales team, you know, like I, like I hear some, some of the 
things they're saying on the phone out there. And I'm like, that's good. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta add that to our, uh, you cool. know, list of, of, of whatever. Let me, let me ask you guys this. One of the things I've learned as I hear you talk, you're exactly right. Mentor, finding a mentor. One of the things that I feel like is extremely important. Somebody listening is going to connect with this. If you find yourself in a partnership where you don't want to work hard because you feel like they're dead weight on your coattails, you got to get out of that partnership. Big I can I, I've over the last several weeks, I've probably talked to 10 different people that have been in nightmare situations with business partners. And mm. I can't tell you how much, you know, when Cody and I get together and hang out, like we're, I've never met anybody that works as hard as this guy. And that yeah. always, that just makes me want to work hard. Yeah. You know yeah. He proved that this morning in the gym for but sure. You, you've got to have that. Like if to me, like there's the insurance is filled with partnerships and I'll do this and you do that and you give me that. And there's all these little messy yeah. situations where yeah. somebody's in someone's backpack and someone's carrying the situation. And it's like, someone's in someone's backpack. I'm just saying I that. picture like one of those baby backpacks. Somebody's like, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah. No, somebody I, I needs to get out agree. of partnership, no matter what they think they need to be doing and, and do their own thing. You can do it. There's enough opportunity out there, but that's huge, man. Cause yeah. I feel like, you know, really Cody opened my eyes to just like what it, what, what, what can actually happen when you find somebody that you can sprint with. Yeah. And that's key, man. Totally. And a partner doesn't even, I don't even think a partner has to be like an equal, you know, like it doesn't have to be like you have 50% yeah, of the company. Yeah, yeah. I have 50% no. of the company. I look at my agents as partners, yep, you know, like totally. I, I look at my, like I look at everybody. I try to look at everybody in my organization as like a partner and building again, something yeah. special. So you know, having that type of synergy yep. is, is huge. And if you, if, in that situation, if you're not sprinting together, you're not in a good partnership. Yeah. Right. I'm telling yeah. you, man, that's so key. I didn't realize how key that was. Cause have you ever guys ever heard like you're the sum, you're the average of the five closest people oh, yeah. you hang out with and totally. all that. That's so true. Yeah. So once it, I started hanging out with this dude's network and all that, I'm like, good grief. There's like, there's, there's somebody in the Medicare. I could name somebody in Medicare space, health insurance, annuities, final expense, everybody where there's seven figure earners. Oh, easy. Okay. Why can't we be that? Right. What's, yeah. but, but that's a bar that's actually attainable. Yeah. So let's get around some people and let's sprint towards it. I hope to be in the health insurance seven figure earner soon. I'm just saying they're there. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. We all know 2021. You come to 8%, you'll meet them. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's we'll big. See. Well, I was fixing, I was fixing to say on that note that, uh, a lot of times, like I don't talk about how, you know, you, you should, like if you're unhappy at your what, what you're currently doing, like I don't like talk about that kind of stuff. However, like if you don't have people that are there to help you and that don't want you to win and that won't do stuff like Brad Hannon does for his people, you know, like y you have to surround yourself with people that like want you to succeed. Like what? Get eight eight <laughs> premier tickets? You mean? Like, yeah, like exactly. That? Like, like yeah. get eight premier tickets <laughs> yeah. for his team to yeah. bring his whole team. It's know? the yeah. biggest deal. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, it's like core. Well, and what happens is if you, if you don't have that kind of partnership is like, it creates like a limiting belief and you're not like, you're like, why would I go after it? Cause I don't even like this. Yes. Like, I don't even like this dude. I don't, I, I, why it, would I? It is that much like harder. This, this is the 8% Nation podcast. It is that much harder to be a part of the 8% if you do it 100% alone. Yeah. I did not do it 100% alone when I made 117 grand my first year, like, like in eight months. My, my dad was like pushing me he was there to help in any way he could like i, I did not me and my thinks that I, I promise you i did not do it alone landon when he's built multiple like you know huge companies seven figure companies he didn't do it alone yeah you every single year you didn't do it alone like right. there was people in your corner and you he, people that are waking up like i did like this business but man i feel like i'm just sitting in my car all day by myself and i'm, I'm never talking to anyone yeah the chances of you succeeding is i don't care how good you are it's just harder yeah yeah yeah, and it's not as fun either. So well, I mean, one, one, we're getting ready to barbecue it up. So. Yeah, yeah. One That's of our friends about. runs a, a a situation, a, a final expense uh, business that does four hundred thousand dollars a week, and they still get together the field force side of their business. They still get together every Friday and cold call together at a hotel. That's awesome. Yeah, and I bet you That's it's awesome. not even about the appointment setting that happens in that moment. I bet you it's the team camaraderie and coming together, and I bet you that's the biggest you know, element of that, that reason that causes that to succeed. Some people I think say I'm that's outdated. I'm going to take that back to the team. Dude, they rent hotel space. The company that's does so awesome. in different locations every week. I'm like, dude, that's so awesome. Some would call that old school, but like it works. Oh, absolutely. And you have absolutely. an independent field force that doesn't have to show up to meetings. You talk about it all the time, but that camaraderie, like a, a coal taken out of the fire is going to die. Yeah. It keeps you sharp. I mean, if you're, if mm -hmm. you're, if you're only like if I was if I had the best marketing system in the world, which, you know, maybe I will someday. But the if you're only taking these inbound calls, these lay down sales and, and you're not like you're not refining your skills because the, 
frankly, you're not putting in a lot of effort to get that. So, you know, going back to your roots and making some cold calls or, or even going door knocking, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it keeps you sharp. And so yeah. if you have to, I, I jump on the phone and make cold calls with my agents all the time. And well, not all the time, but, uh, but enough. And I want to do that when I come to your dude, office fun. next, uh, next, next, let's do it in, in a week and a half in Sarasota. Let's do it. I want to jump on a yeah. cold call. Let's do it. We have a, we have, we have lists in all, all different states and Done. we, I mean, that's, we, we primarily, uh, we'll start a new agent there just to get kind of warmed up, right? I, I mean, I don't want them calling a, a lead if they don't. And I love hiring and training, uh, you know, non-licensed agents yeah. to, to get licensed and then join because, man, it's like it's you're working with just a, a blank canvas. And yeah. so um, starting out with with making those calls, it just it just does. I mean, it's it's like working out. It's like, yeah, it's just it's just you're training a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Let's yeah. bring this home, buddy. What do you else you got? Anything else? Dude, B. Hannon has been fun to to hang out with, man. This is like a whole other day. Yeah, it's well, been a blast. Yeah. And I, and I thought coming in, I was like, I mean, because Springfield, you, you can only book like there's only so many to good times <laughs> yeah. to to fly in and out. And yeah, so when I originally booked it, I'm like, man, it's a, it's a good amount of time that I'm going to be there. But it's flown by, and and now I'm already ready to get, go home tomorrow. And like, you know, yeah. it's it's. It flew by, so uh, I'm Big glad time. that I did have a, a little bit of a longer stay. Cool. For, from a from a health insurance marketing standpoint, leads, whatever, right? What, what's what's a couple tips you can give to those that are like, dude, I, I sell health insurance, or I don't sell health insurance, and I just want some marketing advice, help, whatever, you know? Yeah, uh, I think the the advice that I would give insurance in general is is just that like we don't necessarily have the luxury of you know, the, a real estate agent, uh, I always use this example, a real estate agent helping a young family purchase their first home, mm. right? Or a, a, a empty nester purchasing their dream home or whatever the case is where there might be uh, some sort of like rewarding feeling immediately. Um, a lot of times people, I mean, it's insurance, right? It's yeah. not like nobody nobody wakes up and is like, I can't wait to buy yeah. an insurance that policy insurance today. Insurance policy is so, so fun to pay that bill. Yeah. <laughs> so being real, I think, about what you're offering is the yes. most important thing. And, and that's anything. I mean, that would apply to insurance across the board. You know, if you're selling final expense, you know, that's, I don't know that like, I don't know that like only hitting on all the highlights and be like, this is the best thing ever really is the best approach. I mean, it's, yeah. it's more so let's get down to earth. Let's meet this consumer, this client where they're at. And, and I know, like I, I have a saying that I'll use sometimes, um, you know, and, and I don't just say it about health insurance, but I'd say like insurance sucks. I just try to make it suck a little bit less, you know, yeah. like that's, that's my goal. Like I, I understand that you don't want to pay $400 a month for your, for your health insurance. at the age of, you know, 40 years old. Um, I get that. However, the reality is if we want to stay covered and, and avoid, you know, catastrophic medical bills, we, that's what we've got to do. So, mm. well, good. That's good, man. Wisdom, knowledge bombs dropped by B. Hannon. Yeah. Make an insurance suck less. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's Brad about. Hannon makes insurance suck less. I love it. That's great. All right, man. Well, dude, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. All right, man. Let's get um, after thanks, it, bro. All right. Appreciate thanks that. for coming. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Hey, if you love this interview, and I know you did, I got another one that I know you're gonna love too. It was how to write a billion dollars, a billy in a month. It's right there. Click on that video. I'll see you over there. Because what we're starting to find is that there are plenty of ways that you can open the door with Medicare supplements, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. You guys know this.